like all the Syrian refugees around the world, I think we feel like really threatened, not just because like we can't go home today, just because we feel like everything we've witnessed ourselves, it's like never happened. And some countries are totally okay to just forget about this and move on. Um, so it's a lot going on. It is. Well, I think um, I think that is the biggest, that is the most disheartening thing. I think we, we or I thought at least even 20 years ago when I started to work internationally, that there was this, I, in my head, some weird idea of good guys, you know, some idea of those, whether it be certain countries or certain peoples, maybe it was this holdover from World War II and this thought that this was like, so that the lines were clearer and that there was going to be these human rights goals laid out and that there would be things stood up for and that if these things weren't done, there would be pushback and these were the, and I really thought that's what it was. I even thought that's what the United Nations was. And I thought, okay, there's a, there's some lines in the sand. There's some understanding. We're going to grow and fight for improvements in these areas. And, and to watch, to watch and understand more and more how it's just simply, that's not what it is. That's not the world. The world is not these are human rights. It is these are human rights, sometimes for these people, maybe sometimes for these people, never for these people. Yeah. It's food aid, 6% for these people, 50% for these people. It's justice for these people, but not these people. Accountability for this crime, but not that crime if there's business interest. And this is truly the ugly state of, of so much of the world that we are just becoming more and more aware of for just about every, I mean, I don't know any countries that are are clean of it and, um, and willing to hold a line really consistently and on behalf of the, of human rights and laws and 